bigger dreams than this as far as transmitting electrical energy without wires. But the, the first practical results were radio signals. Really? And this is a reproduction I built of, a, of a, such a machine. Is that? That's a, about 150,000 volts. So this would have been used for a power supply for a radio? Right. It, actually a radio transmitter. So do Tesla coils actually give off radio frequencies as well? Correct. They, they generate a, a wide range of radio frequencies. I mean, there's so much different types of electricity. I mean, there's, uh, there's static electricity, you know, there's right. electromagnetic. Do you have any things that demonstrate the different types of, of uh, electricity? Well, there's a, a small machine here. This is actually one that was built to, to simulate static electricity. We don't have a proper platform here, but it, it would actually make your hair stand on end, similar to a, a Van de Graaff machine. Really? But uh, with much more powerful, and it consumes about 100 watts of electricity. It's more than my stereo. Over 100,000 volts out of it. Uh, this type of machine, the output can be regulated to produce almost DC, where you could charge Leiden jars or do experiments like Ben Franklin was doing 100 years earlier, only a much more simplified method. So we know electricity can make things spin and turn and flip. How about levitate? Is there any connection between these high voltages and making objects actually lift off the ground? Uh, there are eddy current effects that, that you can use with Tesla-type circuits where you can have a a large electromagnet with an iron core and place something like an aluminum ring on top. And the, the ring will act like a short circuit of a, of a wire of a transformer and you can actually send these rings into the ceiling if, if by accident. I mean, steel you can use an electromagnet and pull materials out, but if you have brass and aluminum mixed together, it's harder. These high frequency currents can actually cause them to lift up and where you could separate them in a way for recycling materials or reclaiming materials. So Jeffrey, what's this? It looks like something we saw in the other office there. Uh, this is a the prototype I built specifically as a, a new modern use for a Tesla coil. Really? And it's basically, there's a craze today to find a, a portable x-ray machine that's practical. And uh, they're actually going back to the early Tesla technologies with the high frequency coils. And the problem is because the, the technology is so far removed, they're using modern electronics to try to do it, and they, they end up with these machines that are 100 pounds and that don't work that great compared to the, the tra traditional styles. So here's a, an example of uh, an actual built with modern materials, but uh, using turn of the century methods, an, a portable x-ray machine or a power supply for an x-ray tube. Well, yeah, let's take a look. So what you're saying is that there is a need for having portable x-ray equipment to take into combat, say? Right. Yeah. One, one of the things interesting, the tsunami, there were, there were so many victims, they, how, how are they going to identify the victims on location? And, and you can use dental records, and oh, the problem right. was how do you get x-ray machines into, into the field, into rubble, yeah. more or less. Right. And you can run this off of a, of a series of batteries. Right. Right. You could, if you wanted, you could run it off of a computer battery backup, even, a small one. Now, of course, if this was part of an x-ray machine, it wouldn't be a big spark that way, but you would use that energy to drive the, uh, the x-ray tube. Right. You would have a regular x-ray tube head connected instead of those spark terminals. Right. This is absolutely extraordinary. The stuff you have here is, in some way, very old technology, but in other ways, it's still cutting edge. Right. And it, as technology changed, a lot of these machines, they're they kind of gotten forgotten. There, there's many new fields, uh, as Tesla had envisioned uh, initially, that could still be explored. Yeah, for, for therapy, you know, for uh, communication, uh, for transmitting electricity through the air. 
Right. Wasn't there a report that just came out that talked about MIT scientists using this kind of technology? Right. Someone, someone was lighting a bulb from a, a few feet away, and it's something that Tesla was doing a few hundred feet away. Just sending electricity the through the air? Through the air and then through ground waves also. So there's really no limit to where this technology can take us in the future, is there? I, I think uh, when we go back to the beginning, it's, it's endless what we can do. Yeah. Jeff, what an adventure. Thanks so much for showing me this stuff today. Oh, thanks for stopping by. I got to run now, but let's talk again. OK, anytime. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Nikola Tesla once said, to cause at will the birth and death of matter would be man's grandest deed, which would give him the mastery of physical creation, make him fulfill his ultimate destiny. He believed that we have the power to create anything. He taught his protege, Otis Carr, that. Otis Carr then reveals this message to Ralph Ring, and John Hutchison follows in their footsteps. They were all inspired by Tesla to experiment with zero-point energy and evolve their higher consciousness. 